The Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times, and is another unscripted video with a few notes. I say a few, I wrote about 1500 <laughs> words worth of notes, so it's basically a half scripted um, video at this point. So yeah, it's been a little while since I last uploaded, That's that wasn't my intention, because unfortunately I was getting ready to do my Titanic rant, uh, when I suddenly had major technical issues, which, long story short, involved basically half the stuff in my laptop getting replaced. So that's pushed me back quite a bit, unfortunately, out of the fact I've had some other IRL things as well I've been busy with. And unfortunately, because I, most of my files are alright, but I, one thing did get corrupted, unfortunately. One thing, and that happened to be the script to, to my Titanic rant part 2, and that was the one thing I'd forgot to back up. <laughs> So I had to start again from scratch with that, but I'm getting there now. Um, I think in a couple of weeks I'm aiming to record that. Um, so I suspect early June probably will get the Titanic rant. A few months later, because I'd normally do a Titanic rant for April, but unfortunately due to circumstances I couldn't this time. So, you know, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> so in the meantime, I thought I'd do an unscripted video, and I thought, how about doing a part two uh, to the last video I did on upcoming Tudor dramas for... 2021-ish, you know, maybe into early 2022 when they air. Um, and particularly since we've had a quite a bit more information has come out since I last did that video. So we'll flip it round today. First of all, we're going to talk about the Anne Boleyn drama um, that Channel 5 is doing. And I think it is just called Anne Boleyn, so A plus on the creativity with the title there, guys. <laughs> and then we'll talk about Becoming Elizabeth in the, the second little part. And I'll put timestamps up there for sort of both of them. Right, so... Um, I've got some pictures here that have <laughs> that been released, because a load of promotional ones have been released, and then there's a few uh, from filming, which apparently happened in West York, or some of it at least happened in West Yorkshire, in Elmley, where, wherever that is. <laughs> and I, I can't remember the name of the castle. If I find out after this, I'll pop it up on screen. Uh, and presumably in some studios as well. And that apparently finished in December of last year, so it's already been filmed for four, nearly five months now. Uh, which makes me think it might probably be out soon. If I was guessing, I would say end of the year, but then this is a very cheap Channel 5 production, as you shall soon see, so I think they might make it out, release it sooner. Anyway, other than these officially released promotional materials and a bit from behind the scenes, we haven't got much, but... Uh, and again, if, you, if um, you want to know my opinions of the casting of Jodie Turner-Smith, then go back to part one. My views haven't really changed much, so... But for today, I'll mainly focus on the aesthetics a bit more, because we didn't really have, when I did that, I didn't really have much to go off of in terms of costumes and so on, so that's mainly what I'll be focused on at the moment. So we had these preview p pictures and a small teaser trailer. Um, I'll upload, I'll show that on screen now, but I'll probably flip it just to be safe in case of copyright, because they can sometimes be brutal with copyright. I'm not sure with Channel 5, but the BBC can be. Uh, oh yeah, that reminds me, um, Alistair Sherwood, who's one of my subscribers, is, is doing a series on the portrayal of the Six Wives in film. Uh, and she recently did a quite a good one on Anne Blim, but she's had to re-upload it because the BBC copyright claimed it, so good job for uh, <laughs> BBC. And I think they did that, I've, I've had that as well with um, my Six, that's probably why the Six Wives, yeah, Six Wives review has um, ground to a halt. Um, oh yeah, I did a community post about this. I will eventually review the Six Wives series, but I'm going to do a mirror series to my Tudor rant series called A Praise Of, where I cover the whole thing in one big video, So, and I'll just do like five second clips, and it'll be more just me talking rather than showing the clips of the thing, I'm afraid, but I have to do it like that to avoid copyright these days, unfortunately. So Anyway, on with this one. So we'll, yeah, we'll deal with the promotional materials, and one of the ones, um, when it loads here... So it's uh, this picture here of her in this kind of emerald emerald green, you'd call that probably, dress. Uh, heavily based off of the one Natalie Portman wore in the other Boleyn girl. In fact, I originally thought, is, is it just the same dress? You know, they probably just reused it. But I think there's a few differences, but mm, I'm not overly keen on it. <laughs> I've got to say, I, th I think it's, number one, probably the lack of furs I'm noticing at the um, the edge of it. Because it's only got, like, kind of little bits of fur, as opposed to... If you look at the... I'll just pop a picture on the screen of some dresses from that time period. If they've got furs, they're going to be more like that. And in fact, it's just so plain-looking for something a queen would wear. And then, of course, the I old nemesis, the hood. Because <laughs> I think that's uh, kind of a litmus test for your drama, is how do you portray your French hoods? And uh, we've got, basically, a headband. <laughs> um, I thought she had the sort of the veil behind it, but upon further inspection, it does appear to be just her hair loose behind it, which... I know some of the early ones in the 70s got that a bit wrong, where they have the lady's hair down, because they might... You could probably look at these old portraits and assume it with the veil at the back, but in reality, you would usually have your hair tied up, and you have the hood and the veil over the top sort of thing, but, um... Yeah, they've gone very cheap with hoods. In fact, um... Just skipping forward, there's some other 
behind the scenes stuff of some other extras got um, released as well. And again, there's it's just it's quilted headbands they've stuck on. Uh, there was a particularly oh yes this one here again I'll, I'll pop it up on the screen as um, I got this off of Shutterstock by the way that's um, so apologies for the logo but it looks like somebody has gotten their old curtains taken over a bit of cardboard and got some you know PVA and just glued these bits around it. <laughs> the dress doesn't look too fine on this extra actually um, bit cheap looking but it's, it's, that one looks probably more accurate than the one Anne's wearing for some reason but yeah so costuming is looking very cheap. Um, there's a second one of Anne here in a blue dress, and I <laughs> I think this is probably the worst one we're going to see, because again, she's not wearing any hoods at all in this one. Again, I don't, think, I don't know the context of the scene, so maybe I'll be forgiving on that front, but I'm not liking it. It looks too shiny, like it's plastic or something. In fact, I think there was uh, this one. I think this is the actress meant to be playing George Berlin. That material, that looks like... That looks like something like you say, like you got like your rucksack. You know, the I'm just thinking like material lines of that or something. Uh, and I've, oh dear. So, uh, but then we do have at least one uh, semi decent picture, which will be the one in the thumbnail. You'll see. She does at least have a veil at the back at last. Yeah, bizarre. <laughs> and a black dress. And obviously, I assume this is when she's in prison, so I I could forgive it being a little more simple. Um, there's always one thing I've always wondered with Anne Boleyn. Would she have always worn the necklace with the B on it? Because I, I know that's in the you know the well-known portrait you all see in the books. You know the I think it's a 16th century copy of what's believed to be a lost original. Would she have kept wearing that when she was queen? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to look into that. So yeah, that one's not too bad. But the rest, again, I'm not a you know expert on Tudor dresses. So <laughs> I'll leave that to the proper experts. But just from what I know. Not looking too good. Although, again, there's um, one of the servants here doesn't look too bad. He kind of reminds me a bit more of the Omen of the Guard, his sort of his tunic, although it's very simplified. But my guess is probably just going to be some sort of servant or herald or something. Um, he's not going to be wearing the mask, I assume. That's <laughs> that's, that's not period appropriate, but that's, that won't be in there, I assume. <laughs> some of the gentlemen don't look too bad. I mean, we've got Albus Dumbledore here leading this little group. Um, <laughs> um, again, I don't know if it's... It might be... I don't, is it the shoulders, maybe? They don't look bulky enough to me. Unless it's, maybe I'm just thinking of pictures of Henry, perhaps, or we used to puff them out a bit. But. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, speaking of Henry, actually, because there is one picture of him. And apologies for the clicking, by the way. You're probably hearing this. I'm just I'm bringing it up on screen as I'm talking. So Yeah, again, I'm not feeling it with... <laughs> not least, you know, as visually looking. He doesn't really look like he's got the physical presence of Henry to me. Look, I mean, not like a problem. I mean, you get somebody like, you know, um, Damien Lewis, arguably, was a bit thinner than the real Henry was, you know. Didn't quite have that physical presence, but he was pretty decent, Henry. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, with Wolf Hall, as somebody asked me about the other day, I have no idea what's happening with the second season of that. Last I heard was when I did that video in early 2019, then the, the thing happened, and I've not heard a thing since. I think it's still going ahead, but who knows now with, with that, so... <laughs> I'll keep you informed on that if they get season two. Anyway, but yeah, I'm not. Mm, I don't know. He's not got many sort of the sort of chains of office. I imagine Henry wearing and kind of the more opulent dresses he has, which again I suspect is a very cheap production from the looks of it. And it's Channel Five, which is one of my main concerns. Channel Five have never done a period drama like this before, to my knowledge. They're mainly famous for things like you know, can't pay, we'll take it away. And is re-showing old cop shows from America. <laughs> I think, you know, this could be like the 2003 Henry VIII miniseries, you know, when ITV tried to do a period drama. And that didn't go too well. <laughs> I say period, I'm oh, sorry, a Tudor drama, beg pardon. They've done plenty of other good period dramas, just not the Tudors very well. We do also have uh, quite a bit more info on the cast on this one compared to Becoming Elizabeth, which I'll get onto later. Again, I've just mentioned Mark Stanley. I've not seen him in anything, so I maybe, maybe he'll be a good Henry. Who knows, you know. Some of these cast shows I'm looking at, mm, not many of them are looking physically like the people they're meant to be playing. Unless, again, I've not seen them in costume, so maybe they'll look different. But like Barry Ward here, for example, as Cromwell, not doing it for me. I mean, to be fair, you get something like, you know, Mark Rylance and Wolf Hall physically doesn't look much like Cromwell, but he's still at least trying to puff him out a bit, I think, with his costumes and stuff. And at least he gave a good performance. But they sort of made him look like him, but we'll see. Overall, though, um... Yeah, my views haven't really changed much since I did part one um, in January. It's been by my channel five. I don't like the, prem the sound of the premise. I'll just pop it on the screen, some of the stuff they've been saying, how they're going to do it. It's like a psychological thriller. I don't know how they're going to structure it. It's going to be just her downfall, I think. It's going to be, th and it's going to be three episodes. My guess will be maybe they'll start, they'll just do it at like, the trial and then they'll be told in flashback, perhaps. That's what I'm, one theory I'm working on, but I've no evidence at the minute, so we'll see.
anything else to say? Probably not at the moment. I th again, I have a feeling it'll be coming out. I think within a few months to you know, no later than about November. I think anytime, yeah, anytime between like sort of June and November. I think we'll see it. Uh, who knows? Maybe it'll be earlier. You never know. <laughs> yep, I think that's enough on the Anne Boleyn drama. Now we're going to becoming Elizabeth, and I just have to go and bring up a little more pictures now because. Uh, this is the one we've not had any official announcements on since October, I think, or December, was it? Either No, I think it was October when they announced Alicia von Rittberg had been uh, cast as Elizabeth, and then that's it, we've had nothing official since. But a few more pictures have floated around, and there's a few I missed the first time as well, actually. So, again, I'll just update the cast members. I went through the four we sort of knew slash sort of knew. Um, so Alicia von Rittberg is Elizabeth, um, nothing new, there's been no new pictures of her really, apart from one, where she was some other cast members, like, behind the scenes, um, but nothing spectacular, really. Uh, Ramona Garay as Mary, there has been what appears to be a picture of her riding on a horse, um, I forget, I'll pop it up on screen where this is filmed, and she's with a little entourage of horsemen, uh, in armour, and I, I assume that's her, it's difficult to tell, but she does have, have red hair, which is good, so we got, you know... <laughs> They've gone quite authentic, actually, with the, the look of this, um, this production. Uh, the French hood looks a lot nicer compared to, um, you know, what we just had with the, the Anne Boleyn drama, you know, because I can see it's a bit small, but I can see, like, proper jewels and things. My guess would be this is when she seizes power in 1553, if I had to, you know, if I was a, if I was a betting man. Only alternative I could think of is, I forget the Christmas of, I think it's 1550-51, I'll pop a little bit of some extracts on screen from uh, Starkey's book on um, Elizabeth, where he mentions, you know, they arrived and they all had their own entourages and they were sort of 50, 100 strong, all in their own livery and things, which is, again, that is the one thing I probably will criticise as one for. The military side of things, there's a lot, there's too much armour, I'm thinking, if this is meant to be kind of more, even this time period, and any of it's like in peacetime, like, so some of the scenes, like the first round of filming, I think it's probably meant to be Edward's coronation, and a lot of these. Um, Pop it up. Yeah, these soldiers, they're very heavily armed, almost like, you know, uh, almost like you know, men-at-arms or something, when they're probably just meant to be like the omen of the guard or something, who would just be in more simple tunics, soft hats, and, you know, halberds and things. Not sure, but we'll see. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, Jessica Rain is Catherine Parr. There was, again, I missed this one the last time. There is a picture of her in her costume uh, with the mask on, which, again, I assume is not going to be on screen. And it looks almost identical to the, I think it was 1545 portrait of her, uh, or maybe 1546, I can't remember the year. I'll pop it up on screen anyway. Um, other than the um, the top bit is sort of red fabric, but I think they've done that to make it look more in style for the, the latter, sort of the 1550s, because the problem is obviously with doing a, a show that's going to be spanning several years, you know, fashions change, so you got, but you got to, you know, the budget has got to cover all that, you know. So that's one of the reasons why they don't often do the Napoleonic dramas, because, you know, the French army, for example, in 1805, you know, looks, I'll pop up on the screen, looks like this. Then they switch the uniforms, you know, around, in, you know, 1807, they introduce um, shakos. Then Napoleon tries to introduce white uniforms, then he changes his mind, they go back to blue. Then in the 1812 campaign, they introduce new tunics, and meanwhile the men are, you know, remove a lot of the plumes and so on, so that's one of the reasons why you don't see many Napoleon <laughs> dramas. Um, but yeah, I'm liking the look of this, actually. This looking very authentic. Um... Again, it's still a little cheap at places. I think I definitely tell some of the extras' hoods. Um, you can see there is one. Again, I'll flash this up on screen at this point. Um, this one I'm not very. Again, it's a headband again. <laughs> this is the only one I've already seen that looks a bit like. Mm. So I don't know what's going on there. But uh, uh, other than that, it's looking pretty good on that front. Um, and then Bella Ramsey's Lady Jane Grey. Again, there's been no new photos other than that one from the last video I mentioned. But it would appear from social media that she's following load of people involved in this and a following her back and apparently she has been seen on set by somebody who claimed to be um, involved with the production so I think it's pretty much confirmed she's she's in this yeah <laughs> and I suspect she's got to be Lady Jane Grey I can't think of anyone else she'd be playing but yeah there so on to the new um on to the uh, the newer roles there is an actor um called Oliver Zetterstrom if I pronounce that correctly uh, again this is mainly taken from social media following and some interviews where he said he's involved in some major production and stuff, who is probably going to be playing Edward VI. Um, a bit blonde for Edward, I think, but, you know, at least we've got Mary and Elizabeth as redheads, so that's that's good. There is one picture what I think is him, but it's, diff it's getting difficult. And again, if I've got this wrong, I apologise, and, you know, and I'll retract if I've um, got this horribly wrong, but... But yeah, there's a picture of him here uh, with the Duke of Somerset, which I'll come on to in a moment, um, and a little video as well was release of them getting into this bar, and I'll come back to that point a bit later. Um, but other than that, yeah, it could be an okay Edward, if he is Edward. 
John Heffernan, um, according to his CV, has been cast as Somerset. And again, as I just mentioned, he's pictured in that uh, that scene there with Edward. His well, again, that one is looking a bit flat as well. Sort of like maybe I'm again maybe just thinking of Henry VIII with sort of big slightly more buffier shoulders and things, but. Uh, yeah, it does look a little flat. And actually, that material does look a bit weird on the arm, but I think that's not looking too bad. I think I, um, the sort of tunic he's wearing underneath does look a, reminds me a bit of one I've seen the Duke of Suffolk wearing in a in a portrait. Um, the old Duke of Suffolk, um, you know, from Henry's reign, Charles Brandon. Not too bad though. He's a bit younger than the real Somerset. He's about a decade younger, but he could he could be okay. Like while I mentioned that that scene they're filming, I think is meant to be um, during Seymour's fall from power, because I seem to remember. Uh, I seem to remember. Yes, I was there back in 1549, yeah. <laughs> um, back then, the then Earl of Warwick, later Duke of Northumberland, was plotting to basically get rid of Somerset and replace him, you know, get rid of him as protector. So Somerset panicked and he got Edward and he fled to Windsor. So I think this is meant to be that scene. Um, Edward, of course, wasn't too happy with him about that. So <laughs> uh, Then another conferred one is Ruby Ashbourne Circus, uh, the daughter of uh, Andy Circus of Gollum fame. Um, she has been cast as Amy Robsart, the wife of Robert Dudley, the you know, future Earl of Leicester. Now, we don't, obviously, we don't have any portraits of the real Amy Robsart. Uh, there is one as a portrait miniature that's possibly her. I think identified by the, um, the leaves she's wearing in the portrait is the symbol of the Dudley family. But other than that, we're not, we're not sure. So I can't really comment on authenticity on that front, but it might be all right. We'll, we'll see. Uh, then there's uh, Echo Corti. This actor here. The only thing I've seen him is Prisoner of Azkaban. He's the guy who... I've not seen that film in years. It's Professor Trelawney's divination class, and Harry looks into a cup, and there's a wolf in it, and he's the kid at the back of the class who says, oh, the the Grim is the da 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 from a book. That's him. <laughs> you know, 20 years ago, whatever that was, 17 years ago. <laughs> According to his CV, he's playing a character called Pedro, and he does appear to be with Mary in that riding scene from earlier. Uh, I have no idea what he could possibly be playing. I thought initially maybe a John Blank style character, like a you know just a herald or something. The fact he's called Pedro is maybe he's a Spanish herald or something, um, and he's maybe some sort of liaison with the Spanish ambassador, I guess. But I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, then there's some other possible actors involved uh, that I've I've heard on various sites. Apparently, fun things Tumblr is apparently one of the main <laughs> places to check out for this. Uh, obviously, I saw, actually I saw at the bottom link somebody linked my video and and um, somebody commented, "Oh, this guy's way too like aggressive or something." He's like, "Look, I've been through a lot with these tutor dramas. I have a right to be you know <laughs> dismissive and passive aggressive." <laughs> but anyway, so some info we have about people possibly involved, but I. Don't know myself if they are. Uh, Jamie uh, Blackley and Tom Cullen. Uh, I've heard apparently the former might be playing Robert Dudley and the latter Thomas Seymour, but again, we don't know and we'll have to wait till we get an official casting announcement. As I say, Sod's Law, I'll do this video and then within days we'll have a casting announcement. Because <laughs> again, with the filming, they've been filming mainly in Wells in Somerset uh, and in Bath. Um, they've done a few, few rounds of that. And they've also spent a few days filming at Cardiff Castle. And a brief feed is recorded and uploaded by Wales Today, I think it is. Again, I hope I'll try and the pictures. I'll try and put the links to the where I've got them from in in the video. Uh, although a couple I see they've disappeared off of you know where I got them originally, so I don't know you know whether they've been deleted or or something. So sorry if I can't you know <laughs> uh, link them. But the scene appears to be showing two men getting hanged. Um, let's get the, I've got a picture of it up here from the the article. Not sure on their costume. I guess they're meant to be peasants of some sort, but. Probably, my guess would be this is Robert Kett's rebellion. Because again, if you don't know Robert Kett, he was um, not well. You wouldn't know him personally because he's been dead for five hundred years. <laughs> um, he was in East Anglia, and uh, how, oh god, I'll send me age to explain about enclosure. Um, long story short, he had a re he led a rebellion against the um, policy of enclosure in East Anglia, mainly around Norfolk, and it culminated him getting defeated and being hanged from the walls of Norwich Castle. Uh, and he goes, still go to Norwich. Well, I say you can go. You can't go now because of, you know, the vent, I think. <laughs> uh, but when you could go, it's, yeah, nice place, Norwich. You know, there's the castle. Um, there's a bookshop, the city bookshop. I got a, oh, yeah, it was, they've got books for everything there. It's great. This is, um, the Cavaliers in no way sponsored by the city bookshop in Norwich. <laughs> Um, I got the great bargains. There was a book on the Imperial Russian Navy. Um, retail price £50. I got it for 20 I didn't know I needed a book on the Imperial Russian Navy in my life, but now I do. So. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so, Robert Kett, he was hanging from the walls of Norwich Castle. Um, I think this is what this is meant to be showing. Um, obviously, it doesn't look anything like Norwich Castle, but 
you know, that's budget and all that. There was also some sort of battle scene filmed up in the north. I forget where, because the again, there's one of those links I've lost, unfortunately, in the meantime. And it's a bit of a muddled mess from the looks of it in the fog. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And that's how they always do a lot of these battles. As, as somebody was a reenactor, it pisses me off. It really does when you, you think of, you know, where they've got nice proper formations and order and discipline, and you've got these uh, just nearly like 99% of military ones that are just right rah, running around, as, you know, just. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, after the initial contact, you might start to devolve into that, but. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what battle it is. My guess would be Ket's Rebellion. Or possibly the um, Western Rebellion or Private Rebellion in the West Country, also in 1549. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what these sort of carriages. Are. I guess they must be for artillery or something. But they look a bit. I don't. They look Tudor to me. Unless I'll have to look at Tudor artillery. We'll we'll research that. So my guess is one of those two. The only fear is unless they're going to have Mary fight Northumberland during her seizing power. You know, have some alt history thing. You know, I'm getting flashbacks to Spanish princess already. <laughs> oh God. Hope it's not that. So overall, I think. Uh, just being on costume-wise, you get way better than the Anne Boleyn drama. There's definitely problems with it. Um, I won't, you know, I've got to admit that. But and I'm not sure on some of the military stuff. I think that's a bit too, you know, too much armor and stuff and so on. When it'd be, you'd expect more household units like the Yeoman of the Guard to be a little more uh, less armored. But other than that, is looking pretty authentic so far, actually. My main worry, though, is again, is now the plot because we've not heard anything in regards to that since that first video I did way back in like December 2019. By the way, I, I seem to have cornered the market on this miniseries in terms of videos, because he searched it, and literally all the videos about it are me. <laughs> no one else is talking about it. I think I checked on their Facebook page, and there were, it, um, Facebook like auto-suggests like, related stuff, and it was, it was linking to my Facebook page. <laughs> Just like, this is great, I've got a monopoly to maintain now. <laughs> But yeah, in that video, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they said talk about sort of the sexual stuff of the becoming Elizabeth. The fact that Alicia von Rickberg is a lot older than Elizabeth was at this time period. Not a problem in itself. I mean, you know, Glenda Jackson was in her nearly 30s, I think, when she did Elizabeth R. And that was still a bit wrong, she was meant to be like 15 at that point. But uh, that's my worry about how they're going to portray a relationship with Seymour, I th with Thomas Seymour. And guys, my theory actually is I think they're only going to go up to 1553 when Mary becomes queen. And they're going to do a second season, which will then cover, like, you know, Wyatt's Rebellion, um, Lady Jane Grey's Execution, Elizabeth going to the Tower, and so on. That's my theory. It'll be split into two seasons, so you get an eight episode. Because it seems eight episodes to cram the entire reign of Edward and Mary into one seems a lot. I think they'll spread out over two, but that's just my opinion at the moment. But we shall see. So, uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, I'm trying to work through my videos. I'm now, you know few months behind. There was an unscripted video I recorded um, just before the act happened on an anime called Gossip I've been watch I have been watching. Um good series by the way. I might release that if people want to see that. Um <laughs> and then also then I got my other um descriptive videos. Again Titanic round I'm just gonna work solidly on that, I swear. I wanna get that done. So anyway I've been how long have I been recording for? Oh bloody hell nearly half an hour. <laughs> Although it'll be a cut cut down because 'cause I'll cut bits out by the time you hear this. So anyway this has been the Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day. But wait! There's more! Yeah, sorry, there's a little more to add. <laughs> I, I just finished editing the video, and then a bunch more stuff happened, so I thought I'd better record this very quick, because I've literally just recorded the intro to my Titanic rant, so I thought I'd just do this now while I've got the time. Yeah, a load more stuff about Becoming Elizabeth has come out. There was a few pictures in the Daily Mail. Uh, again, apologies for the clicking, but I'm, I'm just having to bring these up as I'm talking. So, I mean, other than the um, the dark blue coat, looking pretty accurate, I think. Um, slightly different dress to what she wore before, I think, looking at the skirt, but um, other than that, it's all right. Uh, and then not much much else on that. That was filmed in Wells, I think, in Somerset recently. So, and no, 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 as soon as I've recorded this, a bunch more stuff will get announced, but hey-ho. <laughs> and then while I was browsing, I just stumbled across um, Gloss Picks, apparently, the site, or Gloucestershire Pictures. Um, I'll link it in the description, and they've got a ton of pictures from filming done back in, on the 21st of March. Uh, there's a load of Ramona Garay, looking very Catholic with her uh, crucifix there, and uh, <laughs> again, we can see the hood a bit better in this one, and honestly, yeah, it's looking pretty good, um, other than the mask, obviously, and the, the raincoats, but it's some sort of religious scene. Um, I don't know why this one priest has lost his eye. My possible thing is maybe is it going to be Feckenham or something like that, perhaps, but um, as far as where he didn't lose his eye, so... I don't know. <laughs> we'll soon see. I'm not sure about the vestment some of the Catholic... I assume the Catholic um, priests are wearing. Uh, I guess somewhere black, but I usually... Maybe just I'm thinking stereotypically, but usually it seems to be more like sort of reds and purples when you think of sort of um, Catholic clergymen and things, so... I don't think it's too bad. Um, 
Echo Corti again. There's actually a slightly few better pictures of him um, again in this scene. So this must have been filmed around about the same time as the um, the riding scenes um, that were filmed in Derbyshire. Uh, I can't see too well. He's got looks like he's got crucifix as well. So I'm guessing Catholic. Uh, I see a black actress next to him as well. I hope they're not going to do another Lean and Oviedo thing like Spanish Princess because that was really <laughs> really weird the way they've done that. I mean, I still can't get over the fact they decided to go to the Ottoman Empire. You know, it's like, yeah, England's too politically unstable. Let's go to the Ottoman Empire, where they have a civil war every time the sultan dies to decide the next sultan. And at this time period, are currently in a massive state of war with half of Catholic Europe. I mean, literally, the Ottoman army in 1529 laying siege to Vienna. So it's like, good idea. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know what they're gonna gonna go with that. But um, again, I, I'm still holding my theories. Probably some Spanish, something related to the Spanish. But we'll we'll see how that goes. There was another actor here. Where is it? There he is. He looks a bit like a younger version of Kenneth Cranham, if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, I don't think it is, because Kenneth Cranham is, what, 75? This this actor looks a bit younger to me, unless... unless he's, uh, It's difficult to... Get, again, this is a bloody mask. You can't see the face. So, yeah, Ken, a Kenneth Cranham-like actor. There we go. <laughs> um, again, this is what I talk about with the shoulders look a bit more puffy. But then some... To be fair, you do look at some illustrations. Some of them don't. So I think they're, they're doing better than a lot of the other ones they've done. So, yeah, that's... Again, I'll, I'll pop a few up on screen, as I mentioned, as, as we go in, but um, there's a few hoods here and there are starting to look a bit dicey. Again, possibly suggesting they, the, the budget's probably running out a bit, so they're just like, quick, quick, get some old stuff here and just slap it on. You know, you can stand in the background, won't that be noticeable? But I, th I think they've definitely tried a lot more than what the Anne Boleyn drama has. So, so yeah, that's the pictures. And then also, um, commenter uh, reminds me, uh, well, informed me, beg pardon, uh, apparently an actor called Jacob Avery might have been cast in this. Again, this is all this is social media following. This is following Bella Ramsey, Andy Rice, Lisa von Rittberg, and a bunch of people involved in the filming, and vice versa, which is a good indicator. I feel like Poirot at the minute with all this. So it's like, you know, we're we find little circumstantial bits of evidence dotted round, and I'm, you know, I'm sat here making theories about uh, <laughs> what's going to happen. I'm just waiting for Captain Hastings to make some offhand remark, and then I'll go, oh, my dear, it's simple. Wow, oh, yeah, solved it using his little guy cells. And then it'll turn out it was my best friend, or, you know, the guy's friendly throughout the entire thing. He was the murderer. Um, and he did it by some elaborate plot where he piled all the furniture in the middle of the room and tied a string around it and tied it to a balloon or something. Um... I've been watching a lot of Poirot lately, if you can't tell. <laughs> it's a great series, though, in spite of the tropes. But anyway, um, yeah, so Jacob Avery, we don't know who he, if he is in this. We don't know who he might have been cast as. Some have theorised Guildford Dudley, possible. And uh, again, we don't have any contemporary portraits of Guildford. The, the only image you really want to often use is the one I think is in Parliament, isn't it? Um, which, again, it just made up because they, they needed one. So I thought, eh, <laughs> draw them like that. So, uh, that's about it, really. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to add too because it'll just be more for me to edit. So, I won't do any more <laughs> of these, I don't think, until we get some more news. I suspect... I don't know if I'll cover the Anne Boleyn one. I'll, it depends how it goes, if it's worth doing, because there might not be enough to stretch it to a full rant video. And it'll depend on the trailer. I doubt they'll do a very detailed trailer, but we'll see. But companies, I probably will cover, but it depends what happens. If it, if it's good, I might do a praise on it. You never know. I think, I, I'm, I think I'm now convinced they're going to do two seasons of it, though. They'll, or possibly even three. They might do, you know, one ending in 1553, one ending in 1558, and then do a third season covering Elizabeth's earlier. Because, I mean, the fact they've got Amy Robsart suggests they're going to go up to her death, I assume, which was in Elizabeth's reign. So, uh, or possibly they'll do two. No, they could end it with Lady Jane Grey's execution, like go a bit into Mary's. Yeah, that's what they could do that, maybe. I'm just thinking because because Bella Ramsey's going to be busy next year filming the uh, last of Essence, so if they want to get her back for a second season, do the rest of Jane's stuff, that might be tricky. So, hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, this has been the Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day again. <laughs>